Bungie episode 3 welcome. Now, please watch the previous videos first because we are going to be continuing to build upon our Bungie plugin. So if you haven't checked the last two videos, please do so now. Otherwise, you might you might miss some points. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to connect Bungie Court with your paper server using something called plugin message channel. For that reason, I will open up my board of justice and explain how that will work. So here you have a Bungie Court server and here you have a Spigot server. If you have many Spigot servers or paper servers, just imagine they are like this one. Should be very easy. Now, as I explained previously, what happens on Bungie happens on Bungie and stays on Bungie, right? And what happens on Spigot stays on Spigot. So the way we can synchronize the data is by using something called plugin message channel. And if you watched my very first video or you watched the video that I have here about packets, you know that communication between you, the client and the server happens through packets. Likewise, there is a packet called plugin message packet that you can also send upstream from paper up to Bungie and downstream down to paper from Bungie containing any data as long as it is encrypted, encrypted, as long as it is compressed in a byte data array. If you are a complete beginner, beginner in this, basically a byte data array, you can write like this one and here you can store different data. A byte goes from minus 100 27, I believe, 227 to plus 127. No, actually from minus 128 to, pl to plus 127. Now, obviously, if you want to store a key, if you want to store into a byte array and send it, we're going to be using a bunch of helper methods because I'm not going to be expecting you guys to know how to com compress this into something like this one. This one is something that a machine can understand. Luckily, there are libraries directly on the server that will help you do that. First things first, I want you guys to Google Bungie Court Plugin Messaging. Literally, the first link on Spigot provides you with all of these predefined messages because there's a whole bunch of things that you can already do and ask the Bungie Court to send back to Spigot to retrieve data before you code your own. So here is how it works. You can basically just read it out. It'll provide you some basic heads up before we get going. And the first thing we need to do, copy this code on enable. We need to register outgoing plugin channel. This means from your plugin to Bungie and then incoming plugin channel. This means to the Spigot server from Bungie. Uh, this takes in the plugin and then this takes into channel name. Uh, Bungie court already has created a channel name, which is simply an artificial way to identify the types of messages. I do not recommend you create your own channels. This can lead to spam messages in the client logs, such as saying unknown packet identifiers. So I do recommend you send everything on the Bungie Court channel. And what are you going to do? You need to copy this, open your Spigot plugin, not your Bungie plugin, go inside your own enable, and then paste this down below. Now, listener right here, we're going to be changing this to new Bungie. And then if you look into this method, this actually requires a plugin message listener. So what I can do, I can open up the model package, go ahead and create a new class, call it the Bungie class and make this class implement the plugin message listener. This one is an interface that will help us listen to messages coming downstream from Bungie Court, whereas the other method does not need to have anything specific because you can utilize any player to send the messages from. Now we're done. You can also copy and paste this one into the on disable method, which is down here. There we go. And then we can continue. We can continue and we can also copy this code, although we need some alterations. So I'm going to copy and paste this code inside my Bungie class. Now to check for the channel, the check can be there because we're not interested in listening to any other channels. Then byte array data input, it's basically reading the byte array. And this class comes from Google package, which is included inside your server. You don't have to import any API. The way you initialize this is you call byte streams dot new data input for the byte array message, which is encrypted data. Obviously we're not geniuses. We have to use this one to help us do that. And then you can actually read UTF, which simply means read string inside this message. Likewise, should you be able to write data inside this, we're going to be using an output stream and then write 
UTF inside of it. I'll show you how to do that in a second. So moving on on this website, if you want to write things in inside, I can just copy this code and I've already pre-created a bungee command. Always make sure to register a command inside your plugin.yml. This is what I did. Uh, by the way, if you are unfamiliar with making commands, we have a video on commands in this very channel. Just look for it. You'll, you'll find it very easily. And then inside my bungee command class, I'll simply place whatever is on spigot. Also make sure in your main plugins class, register the command this way. Get the command, get set execute, new bungee command. Now, right here, what we can do, we can initialize a new data output, which is the in inverse of the input. Output means sending data out to, in this case, bungee cord. And then we can simply write what we need to and then on the bungee class, we can simply read it. So if the first one is in UTF, then I can read the UTF. If I want to write an integer, say I want to write, I don't know, the amount 50, then integer is going to be, for example, amount of servers, I'll just read an integer. So I understand it might be confusing at first, but just keep in mind, you have to keep the same data type. So write UTF, and then read UTF. And you also have to be careful with the order, right? If I would mess up the order and I would read the amount of servers first, this would not work because the way the byte array works internally is that it internally writes the data type. And I believe for string, it also writes the length of the string. So if we have a string, hello, you can get the length of this one right here and then it'll actually write each letter into the byte array using some very deep advanced encoding, which I'm not going to explain right here. So just keep that in mind, the order must be retained. Now the question is, how can you store objects? Can you put a list there? Can you put a map there? The answer is yes, but you have to convert it, for example, into a JSON string. I'm not going to be covering JSONs in this video, but you can of course Google how to convert X into JSON. You'll come up with a lot of examples and I'm going to leave you with the JSON class right here from Google package, which looks like this one and is also included inside the microserver, but this video will not cover that. Now, what we have right here is not going to work. So let me just forget about the listener class for a moment. Let me focus on the command class. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to change this to list server amounts, and I'm just going to keep it at that. Now, if you don't care about the player says this line, the very unfortunate thing sending plugin messages is that you need to have a player online on the Spigot server. If the server is empty, you won't be able to receive or send plugin messages. This of course can be bypassed by using things such as Java sockets. This is a topic for another video, but in today's video, I'll just show you how to send it via a player. So if you don't care about the player, we can literally get the first player by uncommenting this line, opening the iterables class, get first, and then calling bucket, get online players, and then simply sending the message through any random player. The source of the message must be an instance of a plugin. This can be ours. The channel, as we specified in the on enable method, we're broadcasting on the bungee cord channel. And then you need to convert the byte array data output into the byte array by simply calling the appropriate method. This is going to work, although nothing will happen because on bungee cord, we have to create a handler for this. So on your bungee cord, this is a bungee cord plugin that we made in the last video. Inside your on enable class, find the on enable method, type in get proxy, and then register the channel by the same name. Likewise, you can unregister the channel inside the on disable method, just like this one. Now to listen for plugin events, this is actually way easier on Bungie Cord. We can actually utilize our Bungie listener class right here, and then we can simply listen for plugin message event. This event has a tag, and we can check for if the event get tag equals to bungee cord. And if it isn't, we can return it very similarly to what we do on paper. And then I can simply print out to the console the first string which we received, which if I'm not mistaken, should say list server amounts. Just to recap, guys, this code, what you can see on the screen right here is the cow can do plugin, which is a spigot or a paper plugin. This plugin has a command which we only see on our Spigot server, the one that we're connected into, and we're sending basically upstream this 
packet right here saying list server amounts and then upstream we are using another plugin which i thought how to which i thought you how to make in the last video which listens for plugin message event coming from a bottom spig or paper server and then we're simply reading the data from the event now unfortunately turns out that slash bungee is a bungee command so what happens if i attempted to run it spigot is not going to even execute it because it's going to be caught up upstream on bungee so i had to go and i changed this bungee to bc now what happens if i type bc nothing however what happens underneath it is the spigot server which is this one is going to send a packet upstream right here and you can see we have received list server amounts message so now what i can do is i can simply ask for the parameter or the argument and then if list servers amount equals the argument we can simply copy the same code which we use inside our command right here to send the message instead of sending it upstream now we're sending it back to the paper server so what i'm going to do i'm just going to copy paste this byte array data output and then i already pre-created it because the code is very simple all you have to do write the utf now the name of it i simply picked server amount instead of having a list there and then <clears throat> i simply write down the size of the all servers on our proxy then what i can do is i can list all servers again by values which is going to return server info and then i'll iterate through it and i send the data to every single paper or spigot server on the very channel we're listening to and then i'll simply convert the array data array the byte data array into byte array which then can be processed now likewise what we can do we can go into our cow canoon paper plugin can open up bungee plugin and inside of this class i can change the sub channel to argument and i can change if the argument is equal to server amounts which means that someone is trying to send us the server amounts we can simply print out server amounts is and then we can simply read the other argument as an integer because we know that it is an integer and it'll work this way now obviously there is a little bit more to that if you want to you can also store the unique id or the name of the player you can also store the name of the server who sent the message initially you know there is no limit to your imagination how you can implement it but this is the basic gist by the way guys this is embarrassing so i completely overlooked the s right here Make sure not to make the same mistake as I do, because otherwise it's not going to work. So now what happens if I type BC on my spigot server, hit enter, the message is going to go upstream to my bungee cord, which is going to be processing it right here. And then it's going to write these data. It's going to be sending it to all servers on a network. Again, if you want to add more exemptions there, maybe you can just add the server inside the data, which you want to send the data to. And then the cow canoon class itself is going to process the data being sent downstream using this send data method on bungee cord. So once again, this is going to be read from the bungee cord on paper, which is where's my spigot or paper server. It's right this one. Yeah, paper server. So now you can see that we received, where is that? Received MSG is right here from bungee cord. The argument is server amounts, which is right here and then the server amount is number two because it read this right here now this is not it bungee provides a lot of predefined commands which if you send up to bungee cord bungee cord will automatically return it back to you you can also use that to connect players to different servers get an ip of a player for example a lot of people probably want to connect people to another server so let me just show you how this will work so if you just copy this go inside my spigot plugin and then right here instead of writing list server amounts all you're gonna do is do this right and then you want to change the pvp to i don't know we had survival and we had a flat server so that's pretty much it what do you need to do if i type in bc now i should be transferred into the flat server but oh what's going on the other player is actually transferred this is because the iterables got the first online player which was of course not us because you never know which one is this one so to fix this command we simply had to cast this to the actual sender of the command and right now only the sender of the command is transferred to the flat server now when it comes to commands such as the ip that actually return back data all you have to do instead of using this just copy this out 
say write IP, write UTF, and then inside your listener on paper again, here, instead of reading the UTF, you should just read the response right here saying read UTF and then read int for port. There we go. I'm not sure if the first argument is going to be retained, so we can check for that. And then we can just listen to what this one returned. This should be the player's IP and then this should be the player's port. All right, guys, as expected, if I type BC, we don't have to make any changes on Bungie Court because this is a special command special plugin message handled already by Bungie Cord. So all of the code stays on our paper side. All we have to do, write the IP, send it, don't forget to pick the right player, and then listen for Bungie sending it back automatically. And then the first one, the first one is an actual argument, as I suspected, it says IP. So you can listen to it and ask if argument equals IP, and then you can simply listen to the data as specified right here, which will return, where is that? This is my IP, which is local, because this server is on my local computer, and this is my port, which I believe is just random because of the router. Now, this is it for this video. Again, you can look for all the different stuff, which is predefined, which Bucket recognizes, on spigotmc.org documentation. If you want to learn more about Minecraft plugin development, make amazing Bungie Court servers. I made an entire training called Project Orion for you. It is a full seven week training course. It has me there twice per week on live Zoom co coaching calls where you can actually unmute yourself, speak to me, which is way better than any Discord support, which all the other courses offer. I don't really believe that you can learn so much than sharing your screen speaking live if you have a microphone even if you don't you just share your screen i can review your code live one-on-one -on -one help and if you don't like it we have a full 30 die money back guarantee anyways guys check out the class the link is in the description and in the next video i'm going to be showing you a surprise on how to connect player messages via bungee cord